see it. Amen. Good. Okay. Amen. 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 Well, I'm glad she's home, though. I'm glad she's doing well. They had told me that she was in the hospital. I'm glad she's back home. Proverbs chapter number 28 in your Bibles. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Amen, yeah. Truly's a new little baby. Amen. Proverbs 28 and verse number 26 uh, this afternoon. I wanted, to, I wanted to give you a thought. Somebody asked me a question a little while ago on uh, why did God put this in my heart? And, and uh, the, the question was, you know, in rel- relevance to the will of God for their life and, and an opportunity and a door opened and trying to figure out why would God put something on my heart? Why would I have a burden about something, why is it there? And so I'm gonna kind of look at that tonight for a little bit, and we're trying to use a, little, a new a new deal and uh, see how this works. And hopefully, this will be a blessing and a big help to you. Proverbs chapter number 28 in your Bibles, in verse number 26, it says, "He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered." And so I'll talk to you a little bit about this, just this idea of trusting in your own heart or when God puts something in your heart, how do you deal with it? How do you figure out what is God's will? What is just my heart? And, uh, and how do you make some decisions about those types of things? When I was down there a while ago, I was praying. I was thinking, Lord, that for 20-something years, uh, the burden of our heart was to have a child and that uh, we had to wait for that and had to go through some things. But now I'm glad that God blessed us and helped us and gave us the desires of our heart. And so we just want to talk to you a little bit about the desires of your heart, the things of your heart, and how to discern what God's trying to do in your heart. What is the heart? When you try to think of what the heart is, the heart is who you really are is inside. When the Bible's talking about the heart, most of the time it's talking about who you really are. Let's see if this works. And so far it doesn't. Let's try that and then try that again. If I stand on my head, let's see if it'll work. No. Let's see. We're, gonna, we're moving pretty fast here, doing well. Ah, there we go. Oh, you did it for me, though, didn't you? Did you do it or I do it? So I'll push the button, and when I do, you watch, and you hit the slide. It'll look like I'm doing it. It'll make me look like I'm doing really good. Uh, but So the, the definition that I got for you that I think may be helpful is uh, the heart is used in Scripture as the most comprehensive term for the authentic person, who you are on the inside. It is the part of our being where we desire, deliberate, we decide. It has been described as the place of our conscious and de, uh, decisive spiritual activity. Uh, the comprehensive term for a person as a whole. His feelings, desires, passions, thoughts, understanding, and will in the center of a person. And, uh, and so that's kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the heart of a man. And the heart is extremely important. You know, the Bible talks about in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So 
out of the out of your heart, everything about your life is kind of comes out of your heart. You remember the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the heart is where you receive salvation at. So the heart is extremely, extremely important. We're told to love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. So the part the heart is an important part of who we are. Now, the thing that I was thinking about when I was putting this together was you have some phrases sometimes people, people will throw out there, and that is, uh, is your heart set on something? Or just follow your heart. There are songs, there are poems, there's all kinds of things. I looked up uh, yesterday, just did a Google search about how to follow your heart. Boy, there are so many different things out there. 15 steps to following your heart to success and all the different stuff. And all of them talk about don't listen to anybody and don't, don't go with what your mind tells you. Just go with how you feel. And some of them are just sit in a room, in a, a blank room, and meditate for a long time about what you really want in life and then get up and go do it. And that's how you follow your heart. And there's all those things about following your heart that can be pretty troubling, especially when you think about, let's see if, he, if he's watching all right, there, the next one. All right, especially if you think about this, man, following your heart can be pretty scary because the heart is a pretty scary thing. Um, I've got several little verses here we're going to look at. And I, there was so many of them, I didn't think, it would, I thought it would be better to do a PowerPoint so that we could, don't have to turn to so many of them so that you can follow along and still read them. But your heart can't be trusted. And then he says, well, I can just trust my heart. Your heart cannot be trusted a lot of times. In Proverbs 28, 26, it says, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. You say, I can't believe you called me a fool. The Bible called you a fool, not me. I'm still on good ground. But the Bible says if you're trusting in your own heart and how to get things done, that you are a fool. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know what? Who can know the depths of what a heart can do in its wickedness? Somebody says, man, I can't believe the craziness that's happening in the world. I mean, I told you that you had the Uvalde shooting, and the next two days I was watching the news. They're talking about school closing, after school closing, after school closing, after school closing. And it wasn't because of bad weather or because of a, a freeze. It was because of another threat and another threat and another threat and another threat. And people are asking me, what's going on in the heart of people? Well, the heart is desperately wicked. It's desperately wicked. And left to itself, it will find ways to hit new depths of wickedness. Even the next one. Our heart can imagine some pretty wicked things. Our heart can imagine some pretty wicked things. In Proverbs 6, 18, it says, and, and a heart, the, the things that God hates, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief. You know what? Our heart can come up with some pretty wicked things. Somebody says, well, I just follow my heart. Folks, you know your heart better than I know your heart. But let me tell you, if, I, if people could see inside your heart and what things you think about on a daily basis, they would be scared to death to be sitting in church with you. Most of you are acting like, no, no, no. I'm telling you, that's the truth. The Bible doesn't lie, and that's the truth. Look, somebody cuts you off on the road, somebody does something you don't like, if you could just, like, if there's a projector in your heart that just shot it up on the screen so your family could see what you're really thinking and how you're really feeling, it would be despicable. Our heart can come up with some pretty crazy things. And according to Matthew chapter 15, verse number 19, the, Jesus says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies, all these horrible things come out of our hearts. So somebody says, just follow your heart. Well, I hope to God you don't follow your heart. That's what's wrong with our world today. People just follow whatever their heart wants to do. They just go do it. And that's why we've got a mess that we're in right now. Let's see if this works for the next one. Oh, you're right on it, brother. You're good. The next one is this. Your heart can be enamored with the things of this world. Proverbs 23, 17, Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. You know what? Your heart looks around at people. Your heart looks around at things. Your heart looks around and says, Well, I want that, or I, I covet this, or I want this thing, or, or that thing, or I want this woman, or I want that man, or I want this truck, or I want that boat, or whatever it is. And our heart can devise ways 
to work things out that is not good for us. So when somebody says, just follow your heart, I hope you're not trying to follow your heart in these areas. You can be enamored the wrong things. It can become bitter and hardened. This is a hard one. I want you to think about it. Matthew 19, 8, he says unto him, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. You know what the Bible tells us where divorce comes from a lot of times? It comes from a hard heart. Somebody that, you know, they don't, they're not able to put up with things anymore. They're, they're mad at the fact that they did this or they did that or they said this or they said that. And over time, their heart gets hard. And then they're just ready to just throw in the towel when it comes to their marriage over some issue that's gone on in their life. And it doesn't just have to be that. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 5, I've got it up there. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyselves wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. There are things that we're doing in our hearts that we are hardening, listen now, hardening our hearts against what is best for our lives. And I hope you don't follow your heart because listen what will happen. Your heart can get angry about somebody. Your heart can get angry about something. Your heart can be upset about a situation. And your heart can get hard to where you start missing out on the blessings of God, missing out on what God's trying to do in your life. And why are you missing it? Well, because you're following your heart instead of following God. Your heart can become hard. Oh, he's on it. I can see him moving. All right, let me give you another one. Can be backslidden and away from the truth of God. I mean, these, I, look, I don't have to preach these things. These things preach themselves. I'm just giving you the Bible, and the Bible says all these things. In Proverbs 14, 14, the backslider in heart is filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. A backslider is somebody that is backed away from the truths of God. And folks, you can find people right now that should be in church, should be following God, should be doing the things of God, and as they've backed up away from things they know to be true, they start following their own heart that is not walking close to God anymore, and now they find the way to just do whatever they want to do in life. And I promise you, they're heading the wrong direction with their life. The backslider in heart, it, what he said, he said, be filled with his own ways. Well, I'll just follow my own heart. I've had people say before, as they're leaving God's plan for their life, going off into sin, I've seen people do it, I've heard people do it, I've taught people in this building before, as they're departing into it, saying, I'm much happier now that I'm living out in the world in sin than I was trying to follow God. And I said, you are lying. You are lying. What? No, I'm not. I happen to know that you're doing A, B, and C with your life. And their face got white and their eyes got real big. And they were like, how'd you know that? I just know. And I know that you're not happy. And they just looked at me. And they're not happy. Folks, there's pleasure in sin for a what? Well, you say, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good right now. But you wait until a little bit further down the road when things start really piling up. It's not happy in the hog pen. It's not. And so the backslider in heart, they end up filled with their ways. And you can become dark and deceived when we're refusing instruction. Romans 1, 21, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Is that up there? Yep. And it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And I'm telling you, that's the end of the journey of a person that says, I'll just do what I want to do in my own heart. And look at Psalm chapter number 10. That's the last slide on this little section here. If you flip to that next one, Psalm chapter 10. Go there with me really quickly. I want you to see this in Psalm 10. To think about this, I'm going to follow my own heart and I'll do okay. Now folks, listen, you can... You can uh, you can, you can fake out me. You can fake your parents out. You can fake out your spouse, people around you. But let me tell you something. You're never going to pull something over on God. You look at, look at uh, Psalm chapter 10. I told you Psalm 10, right? Psalm 10. Verse 1, it says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The wicked... Talking about the wicked, the, the, the heart is wicked and desperate and deceitful. 
The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. His heart's desire. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for uh, all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Watch what he says in verse 6. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. You know what he's saying? He's with confidence saying, it's not, it, it doesn't matter. Nothing's ever going to move me. My heart is set. My heart is fixed. And I'm going to do what I want to do. Nothing bad's going to come to me on the journey that I'm on. Even though my heart's hard, even though that I'm in bitterness, even though that I'm enamored with this world, even though that I'm backslidden in heart, even though that I'm going after wicked things, even though all that's there, I know adversity's going to come to me. I'm going to be fine. I'm just going to be set in my way. Verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud under his tongue. It's mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in the den. He lieth and waits to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor. When he draweth him into his net, he croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Look at verse 11. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten he hideth his face. He will never see it. You know what he says? This person in their heart says, God, I'm never, there's no adversity coming my way. I'm going to get away with everything I'm doing. He also says, God doesn't see any of it. God does see it. Verse 12, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble, Wherefore doth the wicked condemn God? He hath said in his heart, watch, thou will not require it, but he will. So let me say something to you. Don't follow your heart. Don't follow your heart. So the question becomes, what do I do with what is in my heart right now? There's something maybe in your heart that's stirring up. You feel like a burden of your heart is to do this or to do that or go here or do that. And whatever those things is, you're saying, how do I deal with what is in my heart? Yeah, you've identified the fact that my heart is desperately wicked, but what about the things that are in my heart right now? What do I do with those things that are in my heart? Well, the next one here is, what do I do with what's in my heart? A few little points. Watch this. The first one is this. Proverbs 22:15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You need to understand something. You need to understand that some things are there naturally and must be driven out. And this, that what I mean in this sense is that there's some things that I say, well, I just desire to do A, B, and C. I desire to cheat on my wife. I desire to cheat on my husband. I desire to take what's not mine. I desire to, whatever the case may be, be that is not right, I'm just telling you that's in there because naturally you are sinful, but that's not in there so that you can follow that thing. That is in every child. You don't have to teach a child. You do, uh, Gabriella, as sweet as she is, and she's probably sweeter than anybody else's kid in this entire building. I'm just joking. But as sweet as she is, I'm just telling you, in that sweet little body is a liar. <laughs> you know? She will tell you things. You're like, Gabrielle, that's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. That's not true. And she will take stuff and she'll say, mine. I don't care if it's mine. It, it may be mine. Everything she's got is mine, to be honest with you. But, but she'll say, it's mine. It's mine. It's a blanket. It's mine. It's a pillow. It's mine. It's everything is mine. She would fight you over a Coke can if she wanted to. There's something in every one of us that just says, mine, it's mine, I want what you've got. You should give me what you've got and fight over it. It's in there, but that has to be driven out, not nurtured. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to get you to see something here. You've got some things in your life and you're saying, well, I've, I've had conversations. They said, well, it's in there naturally for me to want to fornicate or me to want to do this or me to want to do that. It's there. Why would God put that in me? God did not put that in you. That came along with sin. And it's got to be dealt with. It's got to be driven out. You've got to yield yourself not to the sin, but to God. 
And so there's some things that are just there because somebody says, well, I've just got these desires in my heart to do this, this, or this. I'm just saying to you, you can't follow those things just because they're naturally in there. The second one is this. You understand that some things are in your heart so you can pass it on to somebody else. It may not be for you to do something with it, but to pass it on to somebody else. I put the verse up there. No, you, you go back to one. Go back one. Um, it's, it's there. Yeah, I, I put in there 1 Kings chapter 8. Now, that's what I'm saying. I, I thought about these. Some of these may apply to you. Some of these may not apply to you. But it's places where things were in people's hearts, but, it was, but there were some, some stipulations with it. I want you to get it. In this one, you got to understand that sometimes things will be in your heart so that you can affect somebody else with that thing. All right, 1 Kings chapter 8, it's up on the board in verse number 17. It says, And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build the house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son... That shall come forth out of thy loins. He shall build the house unto my name. You know, there's some things that God may, you say, well, I've just got something in my heart to do something or to be something or something like that. I'm just telling you, there may be, it may be in your heart so that you can pass that same desire on to somebody in your family. Let me make that a little clearer. Uh, Brother Freddie. Brother Freddie, today I was talking to him, he was talking about somebody he had been working with. Ever since I've known Brother Freddie, the entire time I've known him, he has, we always joked about an itch trigger finger. Meaning, if something came along that looked like it was an opportunity to go to the back side of the jungles of some place, and somebody said, I need somebody to go with me, Freddie would have been the first one on the truck with them, selling everything he's got, on the truck going. Is that not right? Your dad has always been looking to go somewhere to some foreign field. And every time the door opened, like it just seemed like somebody says, I want to go to such and such, Brother Freddie would be like, I'll go, I'll go. I'll take my whole family. We'll, we don't, they don't, they don't, they, they have no, uh, they're not, not tied to anything. I'll sell what I got, whatever I've got, and we'll take off. We'll be gone tomorrow, and we'll be on the backside of wherever. We won't even go on deputation. We'll just be gone. That's the way he's always been. And every time something has come up, he's tried to go, and God's always said, no, you can't go. You know what I have seen him do? I've seen him plant that heart in his children. I've seen him plant that heart in people like me. And I know that there's people that are in places, me being here, but Caleb being where he's at, and several other people being in other places, that it was, it was in his heart to do something for God, start churches, pastor churches, work and do things to other places. And it maybe wasn't for him to go, but it was for him to get that in the heart of somebody else so that they could go. And God may put things in your heart, a burden for people, a burden for things, a burden for missions, a burden for just ministry. And it may, you say, why do I have this burden on my heart to do these things? It may be because God wants you to do it, but it may be because God wants you to transfer that burden, that desire to help people, to see people saved, and to do things for God into your children so your children can do something. I was talking to... Um, Brother James the other day, Brother James, well, I got a burden to do this and a burden to do that, and he does. And anybody I've ever met that's ever had a desire to really serve God, they've also had a burden to, God, what do you want me to do? I'm just ready to go. I want to do something great for your name. And he was telling me the other day about this a burden to do things, and then he reminded me, and he said something. He said, it may not be for me, though. He said, my son has already, at that little age, Colton, has already surrendered to want to be a missionary one day. They said, you know what, it may be, it may be, James, that God wants to do something, send you somewhere, or it may be that God's given you a heart for missions and a heart for serving God the way you are so that you can give that same heart to your children because it may not be you that go, but it may be your children that goes somewhere and does something someday. You can understand that those, that may be the case. The next one, you can flip that next one up. Something else you may understand. You may understand that something that you have a burden in your heart to do, it may be a good thing, but it may not be your specific calling. I put this one up there because Romans chapter 10, and verse 1, we talked about this in prayer this week. It says this, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God 
to God for Israel is that they might be saved. How many of you knew, how many of you know this, the, the desire of Paul's heart, Paul was a Jew. The desire of Paul's heart was that all those Jews would be saved, right? Who was Paul called to to go be a, a, a servant to? The Gentiles. <laughs> Isn't that just tricky how God does that sometimes with you? But he had a heart to do something, but did not, he did not call him to do that specific thing. Well, let me tell you something. I hope that every one of you in here has a heart for missions, has a heart for, for, for pastoring, has a heart for being a teacher. Now, that may not be your calling, but I can tell you, that may not be the thing you do in your life. You may not be a missionary. You might not be a pastor. You might not be an evangelist, but you know what you can have? You can have a heart for them so that you can pray for them. You can support them. You can encourage them, and that's good for you to have that kind of heart, but that may not be your specific calling in life. Somebody, James asked me the other day, he said, why do I have a burden for Montana? I said, well, James, you're from Montana, right? He said, yeah. I said, well, you probably have the same heart that David had, that Paul had, which is the heart that he wants the people where he's from to know the same God that he knows and the same salvation he knows. I said, that doesn't always mean you're called to be there. It might be, but it doesn't always mean that you're called to be there. You can have a burden and not and not specifically have a calling to be there. Next one is what I want you to see. It's Acts 7.23. This, that one right there, it's up there. Acts 7.23. I want you to turn there and look at that. And this I want to just pause just for a second when we talk about our heart. Acts 7.23. I love this story because this is, this is Moses and... Moses didn't mean as much to me before I became a pastor as he did after I became a pastor. Because I started seeing things in his life and leadership that I had not seen before. In verse number 23, watch what it says. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was uh, oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed, he, he thought... You know, they're going to understand. He, he, he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And you know, the, the issue is he ends up running for his life. He spends 40 years on the backside of the desert. And verse number 30, when full 40 years had expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, the angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush, telling him what he was going to go do. Now, I want you to see something. This, I just want you to get this point. We'll move on, and we'll get to end this pretty quickly. But I want you to get this. When you look at the life of Moses, it was in his heart because it was supposed to be in his heart. But I want you to see something. It wasn't in the timing that he thought it was or in the way that he thought it was. You see, what you can get in your heart, I want you to get this because this works at different levels. This, work, this can work in relationships. They can, this can work in jobs, this can work in ministry, this can work in a lot of different things. Do you realize it can be in your heart to do something, and you're saying, I've got this burden in my heart, I've got this thing in my heart, and it may not be there because you're supposed to do something tomorrow morning, but it may be in there because God wants you to start getting your heart ready for what He might be doing down the road. And so what you have to do is you'll have to patiently move forward with God while you, watch this now, this is very clear, I wrote it down there, you're going to have to do it the right way and in the right timing. Because you can get ahead of God and God's plan, and you can try to make it work in your own strength. And what he did is he said, all right, well, God's called me to be the leader of the people. I'll just march right down there, and I suppose that if I do what I, I feel like is in my heart to do, and, uh, and, and, uh, and when the Egyptians comes up to try to do something, he says, well, I'll just knock that guy out. I'll, I'll kill him, I'll bury him, and the people will understand that I'm supposed to be the leader. And they didn't understand it. Next thing you know, 40 years go by before he's ready to take off and do what he's supposed to do. Let me, let me just make a, a suggestion to you. I don't know that that was necessarily the 40 years was a punishment. I've said it several times before. God was not looking for an Egyptian killer to lead his people. He was looking for a desert dweller to lead his people. 
And those 40 years of him being on the backside of the desert, listen real close, was necessary to him to learn how to be a desert-dwelling person so he could lead God's people through 40 years of being in the desert. God knew exactly what he was doing. And listen now, listen real close. God has a timetable for your life and what he's trying to do. Don't get ahead of God's timetable. And God's got a way that he does things. Don't get ahead of the way that God does it. I don't care if this is talking about ministry. I don't care if it's talking about relationships. You can get ahead of God and you can start pursuing things in a way that's not honoring to God. And God's not going to bless those things. So, you may have to wait a little while before the thing happens. I thought about this one today. You know, Hannah... In 1 Samuel chapter number 1, I thought about this with us. Hannah was there crying and saying, God, when are you going to give me a child? That, and it says it was in her heart. It was the burden of her heart. Let me ask you a question. Is that a natural thing for a woman to want to have children? Yes. It's naturally in there. Is it a bad thing? Absolutely not. Will there sometimes be a waiting? We can attest that Yes. You know what you got to do? Listen real close to this. There's a verse that talks about the heart in Proverbs 13, 12. says, Hope deferred, deferred maketh the heart sick when the desire cometh the tree of life. So I'm going to say to you, while you're waiting on what God's doing, listen, don't get ahead of the time frame of God and don't try to do it in your own power. And while you're waiting, don't let your heart get sick while you're waiting. God knows what he's doing. Just let me finish up by saying this. Let's do the next one. Talking about following your heart and how to understand what's in my heart and why is it even in my heart. How to discern what to do. There's a few quick little things that that you can look at. Proverbs 16, 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his his, his steps. So think about this. You've got something in your heart that you want to do. You know what you need to do? You need to make sure that it lines up with God's direction for your life. Proverbs 19, 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. You know what you better make sure you're doing? You better make sure that what you've got in your heart lines up with God. Even Listen now, even if you're having to wait for an answer that's a good thing, there were several times we were waiting on an answer. God, when are you going to give us a child? Every Listen, you try to do this every single month thinking this is the month by faith for 20-something years. It gets tiring after a little while. It gets discouraging after a little while. You know what you need to do? Listen, you know what you have to do? The devices of my heart are thinking one way. I will have to line my heart up with the counsels of God. Because my heart will say, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care. God's put you on a shelf. God didn't. But then your heart has to line up with what? What the book says. You have to stay in the Word. Psalm 119, 80, let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I may not be, that I be not ashamed. You know what you got to do? Apply the principles of God to your life and let the principles of God guide you in your life. Next one. Ask the Lord to search you and reveal it. Psalm 139, you know this verse. In verse number 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know what you might need to do? You can do it here on an altar. You can do it when you get home tonight. You can say, Lord, I've got a desire in my heart for whatever it is. Can you please search me and let me know if this be the right thing or this be the wrong thing? And then, again, get back in the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say. And after that, why don't you spend some time asking somebody to give you some biblical counsel? Proverbs 20, verse 5, counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters, but a man of understanding will draw it out. You know, we were talking today about asking provoking questions to somebody that's got a, they got a problem, they got something in their heart. Listen real close. There are people that got stuff on their heart right now. They're trying to figure out, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this good? Is this better? What should I be doing in my life? And what you need to be doing is asking God to search your heart and give you direction, looking to line your life up with what the Word of God says clearly, and then maybe asking somebody to give you some biblical advice. And watch now, the answer from God is probably in there somewhere, but you get around somebody that has some understanding, and they ask the right questions, they'll get you to see 
that you've got the answer already there. You're just going to have to settle yourself in what's the truth. And then you know what you have to do? Wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, yeah, Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Should be one of the last slides. Flip the next one. Trust that God's way is better than your own way. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust the Lord with all thine, what? And lean not on thy own understanding in all thy ways. How many? All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Look for what God wants for your life. You say, well, I asked him yesterday, and he didn't tell me today, so I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. That's how most people do things. You've got to be willing to wait. Proverbs 17, 3. The fining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. You may understand that God may be trying to show you what you need. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. God's possibly in your life right now through sermons, if you'll listen, through situations he puts you in, through scripture that you're reading, he may be trying to show you the very thing you need to fix whatever's going on in your heart. But you're going to have to be someone that's listening and submitting yourself to it. And this is the last slide. Flip it to it. For some, it won't matter what God wants. They won't listen to instruction and they'll do whatever they want to do. So you got a couple of verses. Proverbs 18.2 A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. You know what some people do? They say, I just want to do what I want to do. I want to let my heart do whatever my heart wants to do. Proverbs 19.3 The foolish... Foolishness of man perverteth the way his ways, his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. You know, the Lord does have a path that he wants you to be on. That all the teenagers are sitting over in another room. And they're all thinking, I want to follow my heart. A lot of them are graduating, moving up in life, bombarded by things that their heart wants them to do. And there's there's a there's a will of God for their life. There's a will of God for your life. You know, in Psalm 81.10, it says this, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. That's what he says. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up under their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. You know, he said... Somebody said, I don't want to submit myself to what God wants. I want to do what I want to do. And God says, okay. You can have it your way. But I'm going to tell you, I've tried to do it. I've tried to live a Burger King life and try to do it my way. And I'm telling you, it ends up, God has a way, God has a way of you saying, I'm going to do it my way. And God says, that'll be just fine. Let's just circle in the desert for 40 years. We'll just go absolutely no place for a little while until you learn to trust me instead of trusting yourself. And I'm telling you, that is miserable. What you need to do is just say, I've got something in my heart. All right, start asking God. Start seeking God. Start looking for counsel from God. And listen, this is what most people do. This happens all the time. I give people counsel all the time. And I try to give them biblical counsel. And a lot of them will do this. A lot of them will say, thank you, that was really good. And they go out and do the exact thing they wanted to do before they ever came in anyway. That's just what happens. That's what most people do. And I do it too. But that's how you end up in a bunch of messes in your life. The best thing you can do is just trust in the Lord and walk with Him and let Him direct your path. Let's stand. you're going to play, give you a chance to come pray tonight. And uh, maybe you do have something in your heart. Maybe something is burdening you and you have a uh, something you're trying to decide about, trying to figure out. Maybe tonight would be a good thing for you to come and just talk to God about it and say, God, search me. See what, see what you want to do in my life.
And uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're doing something, you're going too fast, you need to slow down and say, God, I want to be on your time. But whatever it is, maybe tonight is the time to do that. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We ask you to please do something with your word tonight. Try to preach it. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would make application and help us to take this home and do something with it in our lives. Lord, we love you and thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to write down every one of these verses and the details that you put in your word so that we don't have to trust in ourselves or wonder what we should do. It's clearly written so we can know what to do with our lives. Father, we love you and thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. She's going to play. Why don't you come pray tonight? Well, if you've got something to pray about, this is the time to do it.